Philip Schofield, Narcissist, Part 1. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Those of you in the United Kingdom will know full well who I'm talking about. Those of you from further afield probably have no idea who this man is. Let me give you a short reason why he has risen to prominence just recently in terms of the suggestion that he might be a narcissist. Quite simply, he as an older man has engaged in a sexual relationship with a younger man and he met him through work and didn't declare that there was a relationship ongoing, sought privileges for this individual and when asked about whether there was a relationship he lied and said there wasn't. I imagine that some of you would be thinking to yourselves, so basically we have older person engaging in sexual relationship with younger person originating out of the workplace and covering up and lying to employers that it was taking place. Hmm. Like that's never happened before. Absolutely. There are many, many instances, and I'm sure all of you listening can probably point to an instance in the workplace at some point during your working life where you knew about an older colleague who was having a bit of slap and tickle, a little bit of hide the sausage, a little bit of hanky-panky with somebody who was younger, and that questions might have been raised about the relationship because it was taking place through work and there might have been a disparate power dynamic between the two, that it might be suggested that one individual was abusing their status and power to engage in this sexual relationship. But largely you would say, yep, happens all the time. So why is this ending up something that HG is talking about? And moreover, why on earth has it ended up across so many newspaper front pages and being commented upon across social media? Good question. Well, in part, it might be suggested that lots of people enjoy some tittle-tattle. But the point is, I'm addressing it because so many people have asked me to do so. And, of course, it's all part of extending your education about narcissism. But it does behoove me to make the point that the nub of his behaviour is that which is regularly seen in workplaces around the world. And... I'm not saying whether that's right or whether that's wrong, but it does call into question why quite does it merit being reported on to the extent that it is done. I suspect part of it, of course, is that Mr Schofield has hitherto advanced what appears to have been a facade of being a supportive husband because, for those of you who are unaware, he was married to a woman with whom he had children and from whom... For a period of time, he hid his homosexuality before letting her know about it. But to the outside world, he portrayed himself as a heterosexual man that was a sort of clean-cut presenter that many people liked. And it may well be the case that because of his prominence, his fame, and the fact that essentially he has lied to people, being something that he is not, that they perhaps feel hard done by. Now they want to stick the knives in. But more about that in due course. A bit of background for those of you who may not be familiar with him. Philip Schofield was born on the 1st of April 1962, and he's an English television presenter. He rose to prominence as a children's BBC continuity presenter from 1985 to 1987. Basically, he would sit in something called the broom cupboard, with a glove puppet called Gordon the Gopher. And he was seen as engaging, he was seen as witty, and many people will recall him from their childhoods. He then went on to present a wide range of programmes for the BBC and ITV, including Going Live, which was a Saturday morning uh, television programme, which was hugely popular. He did so between 1987 and 1983. This Morning, which is a sort of magazine-style uh, program for those who are at home in the morning so perhaps house wives and house husbands and the unemployed and the unwell or lazy students who can't be asked to get themselves into their lectures etc and he did that between 2002 and 2023 he fronted dancing on ice from 20, 2006 to 2014 and 2018 to 2023 all star mr and mrs and the cube in 2020 Schofield 
came out as gay and separated from his wife of 27 years. In 2023, recently, he admitted to having an affair with a young male ITV employee while he was still married, having previously denied the affair to his employer, colleagues, family and friends. Schofield then resigned from ITV following the admission. Many of those colleagues are dissatisfied with the fact that he lied to them. There's also the fact that the public do not like the fact that they were lied to. The public do not like the fact that he held himself out as being something, but was behaving in a different way. And of course, many people don't give a flying jot that he's gay, but what they have reacted to is the fact that he portrayed himself as heterosexual whilst he was cheating on his wife, and that he was lying to his employer whilst he generally portrayed this facade of being a bit of a goody-two-shoes, demonstrating himself to be a likeable individual. But apparently, there's always been a little bit of a cloud that's followed him around, with suggestions of him being somewhat handsy with younger staff on these productions. The suggestion that the facade is very much real in terms of being the jovial, cheeky, schoolboy, humoured, cheeky chappy who sits on the sofa and engages with the general public through this morning, contrasting with a behind-the-scenes individual who was haughty, dismissive and unpleasant to those around him. There is a suggestion that a super injunction exists that has kept a lot of information about him quiet and that that is shortly going to expire and therefore there are a number of individuals that expect that a lot of dirt is going to come out of the woodwork in relation to him. We shall see whether that's the case. There's plenty to examine with regard to Mr Schofield to determine is this an individual who simply has made some poor decisions in relation to lying to his wife, lying to his employer, covering up an affair, and sullying the public trust in him? Or is there more to it? Is this a pathological behaviour that has driven him? Is this something that he has done again and again and again? Is he an individual that engages in a range of manipulative and sordid behaviours whilst presenting outwardly a facade of being fun, kind, trustworthy, decent. There are those that suggest just leave him alone and let him get on with his life. There are others that can be seen in below-the-line sections that are very much out for his blood. But what it does mean, and certainly I have been inundated with many requests from people wanting his examination, is to determine, is this an individual who has made poor decisions and will come to regret those decisions? Or is there more to it? Is he perhaps a narcissist? Certainly, he's an ongoing spat with his co-host, Holly Willoughby, who might be motivated by her own agendas with regard to the way that she has behaved with Mr Schofield. A former colleague, Eamon Holmes, has not been shy in speaking his mind about Mr Schofield, more from him in due course. Accordingly, join me as I now examine Philip Schofield and his behaviours to make a determination as to what he is.